Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I'm very glad that so many people made it here. Uh, I mean, it's first of all a, a Bitcoin conference, which is uh, by itself very exciting. But uh, here, I mean, there comes the additional benefit of a uh, great, uh, um, yeah, great place to be. And probably a lot of you like uh, just to, to uh, escape the probably most uh, 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 very cold uh, areas where you mostly come from now in the winter and uh, escape here. So uh, we have the pleasure to, uh, to talk about a very exciting topic now. Um, it's not only mining, which is uh, uh, quite cool, of course. Uh, it's really about the opportunities of mining. So we are really addressing the question, uh, how to make profit in mining? Uh, what are the interesting um, things to look at? And how can I manage to make in this uh, competitive environment to, uh, to make a profit? All right, so let's start. So yeah, uh, let, let me just, uh, a couple of words. I mean, of course, I know most of you are uh, quite familiar already with, with the mining process. Uh, just a, a few words uh, th so that we're all on the same page. Um, mining, uh, Bitcoin is a decentralized consensus system. And uh, because of that, there is no central uh, entity that uh, is validating the transactions. So there is a need for, some, for a decentralized system to, var to validate them, and these are the miners. Miners are uh, authorizing and uh, validating uh, Bitcoin transactions. How that process works, uh, not too much technical details here, but uh, you basically just take the, the previous block, you take uh, additional the current block, and then um, you uh, have a nonce value that you are, um, yeah, that you are tweaking, and uh, you apply uh, a cryptographic hash function on top of this uh, uh, input. And uh, of course, the output of the, of the hash function is random. So you have to try uh, and see the output and check the output. And if the output is lower than a certain um, range, a certain parameter, um, you found the block. So in this case, particular example, it's 100. And uh, you try first, you get uh, uh, with the nonce 122, you get 1023. It's not lower than uh, 100, so you didn't find the block. It's not valid. So you continue this, and in the end, you, 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 you have the nonce 107. The output is uh, smaller than 100. Yes, great. Uh, it's smaller than, than 135, and uh, you found the block. Um, when you find a block, then the network gives you um, a block, the, gives the miners a, the block reward. Um, this is currently 25 bitcoins, and this serves as the incentive for the miners to to, to mine, uh, to to do it. I mean, no one uh, except the people that really are very eager to support the network would do it without uh, getting a reward. Um, every r roughly every 10 minutes, a block is found, and uh, the block reward is uh, currently 25 bitcoin. And uh, it decreases uh, over time. There is a, a block halving coming up middle of ne uh, middle of this year, uh, where where it will uh, be uh, reduced to to the half, uh, 12.5, and uh, in that way, uh, it, uh, Bitcoin of course get more and more scarce, and uh, miners are earning um, less block uh, less block reward, um, but uh, they are uh, earning more transaction fees, which is the second component if the Bitcoin network grows. So now, um, we, uh, to, 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 to give you a rough uh, a picture of the industry, there are roughly two categories of miners. Um, there are the home miners and there are the large-scale miners. Um, the home miners is, uh, is a, a declining uh, community uh, for obvious reasons. Um, uh, I will explain uh, later uh, a bit more in detail. But um, here are the, the, the key points for a home miner. A home miner is... Uh, Buy, buying machines um, from manufacturers or retailers. They're installing uh, hardware using mostly standard PC uh, accessories. And uh, they're also they're installing uh, software uh, using mostly community-driven open source programs. This is the, yeah, the, those are the main points for the, for the home miners. The vast majority of home miners are doing this. Um, then we have the large-scale miners. Um, for the large-scale miners, they uh, are mostly buying in bulk, or they already uh, own the hardware if, they, if it's uh, manufacturers. Um, they, uh, of course, uh, install the hardware in, a, in an optimized infrastructure, 
where electricity is very cheap and uh, where they have the economy to scale and where they really can use um, uh, yeah, the, the, the infrastructure to, to get a lot of benefit uh, out of, a, uh, out of the, the big size of the operation. And um, they're uh, using customized software mostly uh, for, their, uh, for their own purpose to uh, maintain and control thousands of machines, which is a completely different league than, than a home miner that is having to take care of maybe 10 or, uh, or let it be 100 miners. So that now we come to a very critical point. Um, uh, we're, we're already coming to the opportunities, uh, how, how you can make uh, a profit. Um, and uh, this is these, th those points, I, I have it uh, titled under Shah, uh, specifically in Bitcoin mining, but also on the other uh, mining that I will, will talk uh, in a few slides later. These are the most critical points for a large scale and, and for every miner. We have um, the, the hardware efficiency, infrastructure efficiency, and the electricity rates. This is what gives you the competitive advantage. If you are, uh, on t if you are top on, three, on these three points, you are in a very good p uh, position in the mining game. And um, well, the hardware efficiency uh, yeah, is, the, is, is basically uh, how your, your hardware and the, 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 the PCBs are uh, efficient and how, how they are performing. Of course, the infrastructure uh, is, is the, the everything around and the electricity rates is uh, what, what you get from, from, from the electricity from the power company. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a critical point because this, this determines what your expenses of the operation. And uh, if your reward of the mining is lower, l less than the expenses that you have, then you probably economically have to turn down uh, and stop the operation. Um, and if you can keep it long enough, uh, or uh, you make a profit and others have to step out because they are in the reds. And um, uh, that leaves space again for the ones that stay in the market. So that means they, they are getting a bigger share of, a, uh, of the pie again and, uh, and get a higher profit when others have to drop out. This is really the key, this is really the key point. And um, since, this, since this is so important, um, I have actually modeled this, uh, as you can see here, and in this model, we're just assuming, it's a very simplistic model, but it really describes the situation. So we're having uh, three, kind, three types of efficient miners. We have a very high efficient miner, which is the, the blue line. We have a low efficient miner and a medium, green and, um, and the orange line. And um, we're now uh, assuming a, a difficulty increase, constant price scenario, and uh, let the time uh, run. And uh, as you can obviously see, the green line uh, is the first that uh, has to turn down the operation after the difficulty rose at a certain point. But the great thing is, um, I mean, of course, not great for the green one because he's out of the game. But the good thing is for the other ones that remain in the market, they, as you can clearly see, are increasing their, uh, their returns. You see it's, it's getting uh, steeper. Um, and then we, we continue a while, and then uh, at some point the orange miner drops out uh, because he's less efficient than the top miner. But that's great for the for the for the highest efficient miner. He's getting even more, and you see an accelerating an acceleration in the, in the cumulative returns on the on the on the blue uh, highest efficient miner. So this is really critical. Here. Yes. So another point, of course, uh, as most of you know, um, is uh, the uh, evolution of uh, of technology in the sector. Uh, we started with uh, the Satoshi started with the, his CPU. Uh, short time later, um, people uh, figured out how to optimize the GPU to to get higher um, returns. And then, uh, not not too too long after the the first FPGAs, and then also the ASIC miners uh, came. On all of these steps, we're really having a kind of quantum leap, so to say. It's uh, it's a very big boost of of of, uh, of efficiency. Um, but now, since we are, I mean, ASIC is really the stadium where, where it ends in a way. 
we are not expected to have any kind of these quantum loops anymore. Of course, the ASIC miners will get more efficient, more and more efficient uh, as uh, the, the technology um, develops. But we're not, we're we're not having these kind of quantum loop jumping to another complete uh, technology. Except, of course, maybe in the very far distant future, a quantum computer is coming up. But if a, if we have quantum computing, I think we have. Uh, there is some other, uh, I think, uh, all our encryption, encryption uh, systems that, were, uh, that are based on uh, a number uh, theory are, are in danger. So this is a different uh, scale. And it will all, all, if it happens, only happen in a very, very... <laughs> so this is an example of, this is a mining farm that's purely mining Bitcoin. And uh, besides uh, purely mining Bitcoin, um, there is also other ways. There are also other algorithms and other coins that uh, that that you can mine, and uh, or yeah. And uh, one key technology that is also very interesting uh, to to look at is you can you can use one uh, you can use SHA algorithm and uh, and mine besides Bitcoin also other coins. I mean every the other altcoins also have some value. They are traded on the on the exchanges. They are liquid exchanges, and. Uh, the, the key idea that we had when we started uh, very long uh, already ago, I mean, uh, more than two years, which is in the Bitcoin economy quite a long time, um, was um, that you can take your, your mining power and you can distribute the hash power amongst other coins, amongst the portfolio of altcoins. And then you can receive uh, other coins to your wallet uh, and then you have a portfolio of altcoin and that might do a better job than just Bitcoin. And to be even more precise, I mean, you can this way, you can, you can receive uh, Litecoin and Doge and others and hold them. But you can also go f even further and uh, mine your best uh, portfolio of altcoins that you think, um, or that is more profitable to mine than any other coin, or for example, Bitcoin, and then auto trade them back to the desired currency. So. In a concrete example, SHA, Bitcoin mining, you're mining a, your portfolio of other coins that are also SHA mineable. And then you are uh, exchanging, uh, exchanging them back to Bitcoin and, and pay yourself out in Bitcoin. And via this method, uh, you can achieve uh, sometimes higher returns than just mining Bitcoin. Of course, it's very important also to understand for SHA uh, algorithm specifically, Bitcoin is the vast, uh, the, by far the biggest coin and uh, the, the has the highest market capacity. So it, the di difference of doing pure, SHA, pure Bitcoin mining or mining a portfolio in SHA is not so significant. More interesting it gets when we're coming to other algorithms. I mean, besides SHA, there are, there's also, for example, very high candidate, X11. And a few slides later, we're talking about Ethereum as well, which is a, uh, also a very exciting topic. So uh, for X11 specifically, there, there are uh, various altcoins. And one altcoin um, is, of, in, in my opinion, of, uh, in part of uh, particular interest. We have heard uh, two um, presentations before, Evan talking about Dash. And uh, if you see it, I mean, it's quite long already around. Um, the market cap is around uh, 25 million dollar at the moment, um, and there are around uh, 6 million Dash uh, in the circulation. The price of Dash is that, uh, well, the price of Dash now, it's incredible. I mean, here we, we're seeing 416, which was the state uh, the day before yesterday, but now it's at 560. So uh, within this uh, very, sh very, few, uh, very short time, it rose uh, even significantly higher, and that already spiked quite well. So all the numbers that you're seeing now are based on the, this price, but uh, <laughs> um, it's, it, it got significantly higher. So at the moment, it's traded around $5.60. So um, yeah, let me give an, a, a concrete example, what you can imagine to, uh, to, to, give a re uh, to get from a return when you are mining pure, uh, when you're mining X11, and you're mining Dash concretely. Um, with 100 mega hash of hash power, you, these are roughly the, the, the returns that you're seeing. And this is, of course, independent of Genesis mine, whether you mine with us or whether you're buying, you're getting your rig together and mine yourself. So, um, and it's quite remarkable. Uh, of course, uh, you don't know how much you spend, but you can, 
for, for the people on the, w under you that have looked in this uh, field and probably have uh, created uh, and built up their own rig, they know the cost around what it costs to, to, to purchase uh, to get 100 mega hash together. Uh, but um, yeah, you can also check out our homepage or uh, find in the internet how much costs you, 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 you have to expect to, to get this uh, hash power up. And um, yeah, um, one critical uh, thing also to realize, and uh, we're seeing uh, the, the next video very shortly here, uh, is that X11 is still in the GPU stage. So there is neither FPGA nor ASIC miners, um, which uh, of course is a different, ma makes the whole situation a bit uh, different than Bitcoin mining. In Bitcoin mining, you have this huge race. The difficulty is um, uh, probably increasing sometimes faster, sometimes uh, 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 slower uh, over time because there is the ASIC technology, p very sizable operations, and you can scale quite fast. With GPUs, uh, with X11, we are still in the GPU space, and I mean it's a different league. So building up a huge capacity of GPU power uh, is much, much, much more effort. And, uh, and takes much longer uh, time. Because of the uh, non-ASIC uh, in the space, uh, you can expect much, uh, more, a much more constant difficulty on average than uh, in the shower world. So now, I, I already told, uh, said it before, uh, there is also another very interesting field, uh, also, of course, uh, in regards to mining. Uh, it's Ethereum. Uh, Probably most of you have already heard about it, um, and of course you can mine Ethereum, and uh, yeah, the price also there <coughs> increased uh, uh, quite a lot, which boosted the the, the, the profitability uh, even further. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it was already very attractive before. Um, the market cap of Ethereum is at uh, 100 million dollar around, and there are around 77 million um, Ethereum in circulation. Um, here again, we have the, the charts. Uh, someone who is mining Ethereum with 100 mega hash is, uh, yeah, in around three months, uh, or actually no, in, a, in around um, in around one month, um, you're you're expecting a, around 250 uh, dollar accumulated. So yeah, um, wrapping this up, uh, I already got the warning. Uh, <laughs> um, well. Well, how can I say? I mean, this is all, these are all exciting uh, fields, and um, I think uh, looking to the future, I think in all those categories that we talked about, uh, one thing is clear: um, it's getting all um, more and more scarce. Uh, so the uh, Bitcoin, for example, uh, there's already 70% of the Bitcoins mined of the 20 million Bitcoin. Um, in these two years where Dash is, is now uh, live, there's already 35% uh, mined uh, of all Dash. And uh, there's only 15% of the Ether left uh, to mine when uh, Ether is switching from proof of work to proof of stake um, later, somewhere later this year. Um, and of course, I mean, we're growing, every community is growing. Um, and uh, as you know, I mean, if the, the community is growing, the demand is growing. But the supply is reduced because uh, yeah, the block halving is, is reducing those, the coins. Uh, and in case of Ethereum, there is nothing to be mined after they're switching to proof of stake. So um, that, of course, I itself is a very interesting uh, observation and uh, gives, of course, a lot of incentive uh, and attractivity for everybody that wants to start in the mining game. I think you can uh, say if you want to start mining, you should think about it doing it as soon as, uh, or as, soon as possible. Thanks a lot for your attention.